All right, guys, here we are with some first, uh, the first episode of Mace Mastery. Let's look at our opening hand. No white mana, but we have a castable Anger of the Gods. I mean, can't cast the other two. But if we pick up a Cultivate, we can get some, and there are plenty of white sources in here. So, Unfortunately, we have a castable Anger that we're going to keep. Playing against Carbon 69, playing a 70-card pile. Excuse me. Allergies are out in full force these days. Middle of summer, even though we haven't really got the weather to support it, but... It's always a rough time for me Need to pick up some fucking reactant or Arius or something like that. Anyways, here's an Elvish Pioneer to put another forest in place. It looks like he's solidly in the mono green. So hopefully, there's an Avarice Hamlet. Hopefully he's playing the weenie version of mono green and not the stompy version because uh, Anger is great against the weenies, not, not so great against uh, the stompy stompies. So let's see what he's up to on three mana. Is he going to go straight to a Cultivate? He's going to play another Pioneer. Fine with him dumping his hand. For these little one ones, but I really, I really don't want to see a uh, an Arbor Colossus come out on the third turn. That would be a little bit problematic. So anyway, here's a couple of a uh, couple of one ones beating us down. We pick up a Ground Assault, I guess. That lets us deal with uh, Arbor Colossus, but we got to get six land in place. We'll probably be dead by that time. But uh, I guess if we get five, we could assault it for fun. No, yeah, we could assault for five and then anger. It's a doubling season. Okay. Alright, so let's see what kind of shenanigans he can pull off with that in mono green. I guess he's probably playing the Jade Mage in there. And if he does play an Armor Colossus and Monsters it, it'll be a 12 12 instead of a 9 9. So here we picked up the Cultivate. Okay, this is good. Um, so let's see. We want to get double white. I think uh, we have double blue, and I don't think we even need that. We've only got four blue cards. We have one source of green mana. Is there any double green in this deck? Uh, Genesis Hydra, but I'll actually be able to play Felidar Sovereign next turn, so I am going to go get the double white. And we'll get the planes into play now. So yeah, we'll be on six mana next turn. And be able to put down this guy. I don't know what mono green is going to have against that, unless uh, we fall for a combat trick into like a Primal Bellow or something. Here comes a Vengevine, so that's a bit of a beat down play right there. It's coming in for six. Coming in for six. So we're down to 11 already. Shit. But I think with a Vengevine on the field, to be perfectly honest, that that's, uh, we're solidly in anger, anger of the Gods territory. So the question is, can I cast a War Monk and still Anger of the Gods? I can. So let's put down a War Monk. And then we'll wipe his side of the board. Hopefully he doesn't have Primal Bellow to save one of his dudes. And there is Vengevine in exile. Okay, that's where we want to be. And now we've got a 3-4 lifelinker in play. Uh, Half-decent removal spell. You know, this is worth 6 damage now. If he puts down something big, it's a Michaeloth on an empty board. We're going to kill the fuck out of that. Although I don't know if we need to do it just yet. So we've got a Battle Grace Angel. I can swing right into it. Yeah, let's, just, let's play the Battle Grace Angel here. Rox already has lifelink, but this will give it a plus one, plus one bonus and make it a four five. So that the Michaeloth uh, can't block profitably. Got another Battle Grace here, but uh, two of them together. I mean, it's two Exalted Triggers, but you're only getting one instance of lifelink. Multiple instances instances don't stack. So if he swings here, I may trade it off since I have the, the second one here. But we'll see how it goes. He could have a Primal Billow, but at the end of the day, getting Primal Billow out of his hand would be pretty good. He's going to growth in his main phase and let me know he has it. And then he's going, oh, okay, that's why he's going to do it. He's got Prey Pond. Okay. Alright, so we're getting hit for 8 here. That's cool, bro. That's cool. He's got no cards in his hand, so that thing's fucking dead. Yes, sir. -y. Gonna kill the fuck out of that. Alright, picked up a Stone Forge. So uh, we will Ground Assault here. We'll play the Mystic and draw a card. And then we can cheat both of our artifacts into play over time. It's unfortunate we can't do that right now. So there's the Mana Force Mace. And we'll swing in here for three. And uh, go back up to ten. And let's see how well our opponent can top deck out of his 70 card mono green nonsense. And see what he manages to pull off the top. It is a pass the turn. Probably a Palaka Worm or something similar. Now, what are we going to do? We are going to... I would like to spend 
I guess I'll cast one equipment and then cheat the other one. I could. I could just cast and equip the Avarice Amulet. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Get that into play now. Put it on the lifelinker. I doubt he's going to be able to top deck us and uh, get rid of the War Monk. He's going to, unless that last card he top decked was a Prey Upon, and now he top decks a big creature, he can steal it. But you know, I don't think that's tremendously likely. So I think it's fairly safe to hang the amulet on the lifelinker. Take him to seven. We're back up to fifteen now. Is he going to pass again? He had better have a fog in his hand. Because I'm just going to, uh, well, I'll wait to draw my card for turn, but I I'm going to cheat that Mana Force Mace into play and equip it. So there's a Cultivate, and there's a Thoctar. But let's just, uh, let's just put the Mace straight into play pre-combat. And then let's, uh, let's put it on. I think it's plus three, plus three at the moment. So it should be up to eight power. And that Cultivate there, we could go get a Forest and a Swamp if we were to need to. And if he has a fog, then we'll do that next turn. But, uh, yeah, he's got a fog. Okay, so we're not going to do any damage this turn. All right, he's still got one card in his hand. Now up to two on his draw step. Still hasn't drawn a creature by the look of it. He could have more fogs. So we're going to get to draw an extra card again. There's a Bane Slayer and a Rafik. So let's, uh, let's try and get Rafik into play by tapping this way. Will this work? No, I want to tap both my planes and the green source. I guess it doesn't matter. He's gone anyway. Rafik needs blue and green, so I need to tap the bivouac. Let's just fuck it. Uh, black tapped. Forest untapped. There we go. And then let's drop Rafik. It's unfortunate that the first strike damage is going to kill him. Because we're, uh, we're swinging in for a ton here now. We'll get the exalted double strike. So there is an 11-10 double striking, life-linking, vigilant dude. Suit him up. Yeah, and he's dead. But again, you know, playing against the mono green fog. Not much hope he's going to have there. I mean, he did get off to a, a fairly quick start, I suppose, with the Venge Vine there. But we had the life gain and the removal in, but he just emptied his hand so fast with those Pioneers and, and essentially just ran out of cards extremely quickly and couldn't keep up. All right, well, that was only 7 minutes and 57 seconds, so I'll give a, give the lobbies another shot and see what I can come up with. See you in a couple seconds. All right, I was very close to giving up the hunt. I was pretty much sitting there for... Over an hour just sticking around on my phone, but anyways, let's look at this. We got two stone forges, piece of equipment in our hand, no second red source, six drop, only two mana. Not feeling it. Here we have four land, and we can cast a turn three Thoctar. And we have two pretty big bombs up here at the top, so let's go ahead and keep this. Then drop a bivouac into play and pass it on over to Marcio Quieros or something. I don't speak Spanish, we're uh, Canadian up here. So, uh, a bit of French, I know. Uh, but uh, not Kieros. I've also studied Russian, but that was that was a very, very long time ago. So I'm not going to go busting that out here. So Mr. Kieros, I'm just going to call him Marcio because I'm probably butchering that last part there. He's played a Sandstep Citadel, which is the Abzan Triland. He's playing 60 cards, and uh, now we've got the Triland into Radiant Fountain. Okay, and it looks like he doesn't have a play, which he doesn't. So we pick up a Ground Assault, which is always nice to have. And uh, we don't have any white mana since we have two bivouacs, so we have to play the planes here in order to be able to cast our Thoctar, which we will of course do. And we also have another one. So I'd like to pick up another tap land here, honestly. That way we get uh, tap land Thoctar into basic Bane Slayer. He's missed his land drop and has to discard. That's not very good when you're facing down a five power critter. Get stuck on two mana and have no play. So there's, uh, well, there's another basic. Wait, what did he throw away? Raised by wolves? Okay. Let's just swing in for five here. So we must be playing some kind of wolf tribal deck, you know, but I imagine you, that would be mono green or perhaps green white. I guess that uh, that's a Selesnya Gilgate. Let's put down another Thoctar and really put the pressure on him. And uh, drop a forest in play. 
And pass it on back. See if he can hit his third land or if he just draw uh, dies to double Thoctar. No, so he's hit his third land, but does he have a play? He still doesn't. I mean, he could have a raised alarm here to chump both, but even that is not... Uh, that's not going to be fantastic for him. I don't have the second white source, though, to be able to cast that Bane Slayer, which is unfortunate. Drawing this thing here is absolutely horrible. There's only two things this does in the deck. Uh, it turns up your Mana Force Mace from a 4-4 to a 5-5, and it lets you use the Black Moat on Obelisk of Valera. Other than that, it does absolutely diddly squat. But since we already have a forest in play and two other green sources, we may as well play it out and just uh, confuse our opponent, who's still just doing nothing, man, while he's dying to Thoctars. Is that... Is that what he's going to do? He's going to get hit with Thoctar, Thoctar, and discard a Raised by Wolves and something else, man. Uh, you got to learn how to keep your hands or, or build your deck so that you actually have you know, plays on the second and third turn. Hunt the Weak, yeah, that's not a very good spell. Uh, Mystic Monastery, that's the white source that we need to cast Baneslayer and Enter's Tap, but pretty sure this is it. I'm sorry, uh, sorry about this game, you know, where dude just does nothing and dies a double Thoctar, but I've been sitting here for well over an hour trying to find a second game. So I didn't have the end of the episode like that. So uh, unfortunately, that is that. All right, guys. Well, uh, didn't really get to show off. You know, didn't. Well, I, I did, I suppose, but didn't get to have uh, too much competition tonight. So uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, you fare better tomorrow, and uh, we'll see you for some more gameplay at that time. All right. I know I said I was going to end it, but I just didn't feel the right end it like that. So I decided to take a chance, give it five minutes. I found this game in less than two, so okay. Let's mulligan a one-lander. Let's look at uh, Seaside, Seaside, Plains. No red mana, but we've got, whoops, we've got to cultivate into Bane Slayer. So uh, that seems pretty good. So we'll keep that. Uh, we're looking at uh, an opponent, Black Blood, 2044. Playing the, uh, he's uh, playing the 80-card pile. Starts with the Plains. We pick up a Thoctar, but unless we draw an untapped Mountain... Well, they're all mountains untapped, aren't they? Um, unless we draw a mountain or a tap land with red on it right now, we can draw the mountain next turn, then we won't get to play this. We're going to have to play the Cult of it. It is a ground assault, so we may as well just uh, just Citadel here, and then we will uh, Cultivate for double red. Unfortunately, I mean, to Cultivate, we're trying to get our basics, all five different ones in play, but we do need the double red for Infernal Titan, so I'm not going to dick around and hope I get it later. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to Cultivate here for red red. And our opponent has played, I think it's the Abzan Triland, so there is a mountain, there is another one. Let's have a look, Sand Step, yep. He's played a Sand Step, so he's got uh, white with some traces of green and black, there is a swamp, and he's tapping out for a Rock's Faith Mender, which can be pretty difficult to deal with and pretty annoying. So I think, honestly, I'll probably just Ground Assault it and then play one of these guys. Let's see, um, if I Ground Assault... Can I still Thoctar? Yes, I can. So let's Thoctar. And then let's kill that fucking thing because uh, those, those things are annoying. Honestly, they're very hard to kill, especially if they manage to stick something on top of it. You know, the effect is uh, the effect is annoying. Everything about that fucking card is annoying. So uh, he got to go. All right, so now we got a 5-4. I mean, if, if our opponent taps out, well, he's just going to Hunter's Prowess. I mean, that's an instant. You know, I would not Hunter's Prowess there in open mana, but that's still why you don't tap out, you know, give your opponent a chance for some extra value. So now the question becomes, if he's playing Flesh to Dust, I mean, do I just jam Bane Slayer now? I think I'll probably just use the Brim Ass and uh, see if he's got another removal spell, and then we'll uh, play Bane Slayer out after that. I mean, Brim Ass is a pretty big threat, especially on an empty board. We've got the Prowess. So, I mean, uh, it's not like it's uh, something that he wouldn't want to kill with a Tribute to Hunger or another Flesh to Dust if he has it. He's just going to main phase... Oh, that's a Sorcery. Is that a Sorcery? I thought that was an instant. No, it's an instant. He's just going to main phase a Meditation Puzzle, gain 8 life. So we pick up a Reprisal, and um, with him with only one mana here, I guess Ulcerate won't do it. I mean, he could fog me and prevent me from drawing cards, but I am just going to go ham here and draw 6 cards. Don't think there's anything he can do about it. So let's get in here, and uh, actually we'll deal 7 damage because we got the token, but we'll only draw 6. Only draw 6. We haven't played land this turn. So we're going to be up to 11 cards in hand. Definitely going to have a land to play. Um, definitely going to have a land to play. We actually didn't pick up very much in the way of land, so we're going to have to keep this island. Got a pair of mystics. We can throw one of those away. I think we can safely throw a cultivate. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
So uh, we'll definitely, um, definitely throw away a Mystic since we have two of them. And we don't really need the Cultivate. And I guess Visionary. I mean, yeah. Let's just throw that. Still got a lot of good stuff in our hand here. So let's see what he does now. He's on 21. Oh, here he is, Radiant Fountain. He must be playing some type of... Uh, he must be playing Sanguine Bond. He's just got an Angelic Edict. So he's playing all the 5 drop removal spells. So I think... I think now we play Bane Slayer. And uh, then the Infernal Titan is going to be our final follow-up. So we'll play the Bane Slayer out. And we will go get... Uh, I don't need to keep up reprisals. Let's go get a Mana Force Mace here. I don't think we need to uh, draw an extra card every single turn and open ourselves up to that. I think we just get the uh, just get the mace. And there it is in hand. So then uh, we get to swing for one anyway. We got to keep our token off the brim ass. And let's see. We get seven mana, I do believe. Yeah, seven. So this is going to cost us five to get into play through Stoneforge and then equip. If that's uh, you know if that's the line that we want to take, so he doesn't do anything. How many different basic land types do we have? We have three, so it's a plus three, plus three buff for five mana. I don't think we want to do that right now. Don't think we really want to Felidar just yet. You know we're in a pretty good spot on board, honestly. So I'm not going to attack with the Stone Forge because I probably I probably will cheat in the Mana Force Mace at the end of the turn, but I'll probably just double Visionary here. Just get uh, get deeper. Oh, he's got Divine Verdict in his deck. Well, well, well. Okay, well, I mean, that's it, boy. We've got to draw out all of his removal. He's down to one card now, um, so probably now is the time. I mean, Felidar is a pretty big must-answer threat, but I, I kind of want to get that mace into play. Seven mana. I wish I had the... I suppose I can take a shot. No, no, I can't. Um... Fuck it, let's just get the cat into play and, uh, and put the pressure on. Again, I mean, he's gonna he's gonna run out of removal eventually, and then Titan's going to wreck him. This deck, I mean, pretty much every single card in this deck is, is must answer, or every creature. So he's got a mind rot. Um, do we need reprisal? He could be playing Kozilek or something big if he's playing a controlish type deck. You never know. He's playing seventy or eighty cards or something. Don't think we're gonna need anger, but I, you know, really, I think visionary or two cards that would pitch. So here we have a basic planes. I'm just gonna get the mason to play. I'm just gonna do that, and we're gonna equip it to. We know he's playing Divine Verdict, so he'd get a ton of value there. Although I want to gain the life. I think the safe play is just to hang it on the Vigilant Token, though. I think that's the safe play. Same amount of damage. We, we gain three less life, but makes his removal worse. So let's get him for eight. Gain four life. And just uh, hold open Reprisal. If he had some attackers, I could you know, maybe switch the mace around post-combat. But he doesn't have anything on the go. Hopefully he taps out for a grizzle brand. I'd love to just kill it. So he's gonna flesh to dust the cat. So that means uh, I think I think we're finally gonna play the Infernal Titan here. Picked up a Battle Grace Angel. Actually check that, we're gonna put Battle Grace into play. Hang on to the Infernal Titan for as long as we can, since uh, he does seem to be playing a fuck ton of removal. So let's just get in for five lifelink. Little brim ass token is doing work with the mace on it. All right, so he's down to eight. We're up to twenty nine. It's too bad we don't have the cat. I would love, I would love to trigger this alternate wood condition. I really would. Hopefully, before uh, before the week is out, we will get to do that. But we'll see. He's on eight mana. Here comes the giant scorpion. Well, we can just put the mana force mace up in the air. Um, yeah, I think that is what we will do. Which will honestly, which will kill him if he doesn't have a response because we're going to get to swing for eight because of the exalted trigger and the plus three plus three on the mace so let's see if he's got the removal for it 
And there we go. Is this it? That's it. All right, so we we managed to fight through a nice uh, a nice large amount of removal, but you know every single creature we put down was uh, was a threat. So you know he he wasn't playing too much in the way of creatures on his own side of the board, and he was playing some pretty slow removal. So you know he didn't really put too much pressure on us. We were able to just keep playing out threats, but uh, you know Mace did a little bit of work. Pretty fun card. All right, guys, this is actually the last game, and we'll see you for some more gameplay tomorrow.